Today I'm continuing my series on herbs and I want to share with you the best homemade medicinal herbal tea recipe for a great night's sleep. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now you can certainly buy tea bags at the grocery store that are made from herbal blends for helping you sleep at night. Traditional Medicinals has Nighty Night Tea, uh, Celestial Seasonings has Sleepy Time Tea, and I'm sure there's a host of others on the shelves as well. But if you truly want a medicinal herbal tea to help you sleep at night, especially if you're struggling to sleep and you've tried those ones at the grocery store, making your own medicinal herbal tea for sleep may be the best thing that you can do. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know whenever I talk about using herbs in their medicinal form, I always like to share a little caveat with you. And that is, if you are pregnant, nursing, thinking of using herbs with children, or if you're taking medication, either over-the-counter or prescription, or you have allergies, you really want to check with your healthcare professional and do your research and make sure that the herbs you're thinking of using for yourself or your family are appropriate. Now, in a previous video, I shared with you a master recipe for how to make medicinal herbal teas. And if you've not had a chance to see that video, I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below. And it's part of a series of videos that I'm doing on herbs, including uh, sharing with you the herbs that I consider are essential for you to either grow in your own kitchen garden or to buy in a dried form. So just for a little review, under that master recipe for making an, a medicinal herbal tea, there are basically two methods that come under that master recipe umbrella. One is the four hour or even better overnight method. And that's a great way for making medicinal herbal teas when you have time on your hands and you may not need that medicinal herbal tea right away. However, the other method is sort of the quick, <laughs> I need it right away method. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. And the reason that I'm sharing the quick method is because generally in the evening, if you find you're struggling to sleep, you want to just make your uh, herbal medicinal tea for sleep quickly and be able to enjoy it and then hopefully get a good night's sleep. Now let's get started, but I want you to know you don't need to write anything down. If you open the description under this video, you'll see a word that says recipe and next to it will be a link. Just click on that. That'll take you over to my website, same name as my YouTube channel, Mary's Nest, and you will be able to read this recipe along with all the instructions online or you can print it out. And printing it out is kind of nice to do because then you can put it in your kitchen journal. And if you've not had a chance to uh, in, uh, see that video where I show you, uh, where I share with you my kitchen journal and show you how to put together one, you might enjoy that. Now the first thing that you're going to need is some type of pot or saucepan. Whatever you have will work and it doesn't need to be particularly large, but it's going to need to be able to hold a little over four quarts or one liter of water. And if you're measuring in quarts, one quart is four cups and you're going to want about four and a half cups because we want to wind up with about a quart of tea when we're done and we want to allow for a little bit of evaporation. So the first thing we want to do is just pour our water into our saucepan and once we get all of this in here, we're going to turn our heat up to high because we want to bring this up to a boil. Now don't worry, we're not going to be boiling our herbs. We just want to get our water nice and hot. Once we bring it up to a boil, then we're going to turn it down very low and then we'll proceed from there. Now, while that's coming up to a boil, let's go over all the herbs that we're going to use to make our great night's sleep tea. Now, I think to anyone who's familiar with an herbal sleep tea, it's not going to come as a surprise to you that the first herb that we're going to include in our blend is chamomile. 
Chamomile is very famous for having sedative properties. And this is something that our ancestors have known for centuries, but that scientists now have actually proven. And if this sort of thing interests you, uh, when you click on the link for the recipe, that's also going to have a blog post that corresponds with this video, where I will provide links to the various scientific studies where scientists have shown that these herbs actually do do what they're supposed to do. Now, if you decide to grow chamomile in your kitchen garden, you may see two types of chamomile sold. You might see Roman chamomile, or sometimes referred to as English chamomile, and you'll also see German chamomile. It's actually the Roman or the English chamomile that are considered the true or the real chamomile, but it's the German chamomile that has more volatile or essential oils in it. So whenever you're making any kind of herbal medicinal sleep tea, you really want to try to use German chamomile. And what it is about chamomile that causes these sedative properties is that it works on our nervous system to just sort of calm everything down. And as it calms down our nervous system, it, it creates a sedative effect that then makes us sleepy. But chamomile has also been shown to help with other things. And it's these other things that contribute to helping with a good night's sleep. And what they are is that chamomile is an anti-inflammatory. And if you have arthritis pain, that can keep you up all night. And scientists have found that chamomile tea taken at night and made prepared in a medicinal way, like we're going to do today, can actually tamp down the inflammation of arthritis. And people in different studies on this subject found that they slept just as well taking chamomile tea as they did taking their anti-inflammatory medication. That's pretty amazing. Also, chamomile has been shown to relieve mus muscle spasms. So if you are prone to like leg cramps and muscle spasms or maybe cramps in your feet, different things like that, chamomile in this sort of tamping down, so to speak, of the nervous system can often help soothe those nerves that may lead to these muscle spasms. And so in calming down the nervous system, it's been found that chamomile can calm muscle spasms. So if you're prone to muscle spasms or arthritis pain or any type of related inflammation similar to an arthritis, chamomile can help tremendously. So not only does it calm your nervous system, it's also an anti-inflammatory and that's what leads to contributing it to help you have a good night's sleep. Now, although chamomile is an amazing herb, when you make it into a tea, it can have somewhat of a bland flavor. Now, certainly you can add a little lemon, you can add a little honey, whatever you like, but overall it has a very plain, bland flavor. So often, mixing chamomile with other herbs that are a little more flavor, flavorful can make a little more of a delightful beverage. But when you look for herbs to which you want to flavor your chamomile tea with, you want to also look for herbs that have the benefits that you're looking for, the medicinal benefits that you're looking for. And in a sleep tea, you're looking for ones that are going to create a sedative property. Well, our water's getting a little closer to coming up to a boil, but I want to go over these other herbs before we proceed to our next step. But when it comes to making a medicinal herb tea for sleep, lemon balm is a wonderful addition to the chamomile. Lemon balm offers wonderful flavor, plus it has mild sedative properties. But in addition to calming the nervous system, thereby bringing about this sedative effect, it also calms the digestive system. So if you're prone to problems like indigestion or acid reflux, or GERD, or just a mild upset stomach, lemon balm can be your best friend. So mixing it with the chamomile will bring in lovely flavor, as well as sedative properties, as well as calming digestive properties. 
Well, this has come up to a rolling boil, and now what I'm gonna do is turn it down to its lowest setting and just let it calm down because we're gonna simmer our herbs on that lowest setting. Now, the next herb that we're gonna add to our blend is lavender. And if you've ever smelt lavender, you know how lovely it is. Oh God, <laughs> it's so delightful. And lavender, like the lemon balm, will help add some lovely flavor to brighten the chamomile. Lavender, in addition to adding a lovely flavor to your tea, also offers profound sedative, calming, and relaxing effects. So you can't go wrong if you need something to help you relieve the stress of the day from your mind. If you have a very overactive mind and you can't stop thinking about things that then leads to a stress-induced headache and now you really can't fall asleep, lavender can help with that. Because the volatile or essential oils have such strong, calming, and relaxing effects on the human body, it can quiet the nervous system and specifically quiet the stress in one's mind. And it can go on to help relieve a stress-induced headache. And once all of that is relieved, it's a lot easier to fall asleep. Generally, when you make a medicinal herbal tea, you're looking to use anywhere from four to five tablespoons of dry herbs to approximately one quart of water. Now, if you were using fresh herbs, you'd be looking for fresh herbs that could fill about a half of your quart size jar. But today we're using dry herbs, so we're gonna use five tablespoons of a mixture of these three herbs. Now the reason the master recipe is a little flexible and says from four to five tablespoons of herbs is because if you're using very strong herbs, maybe like a peppermint, then you're gonna be looking to scale back to something closer to four tablespoons than five tablespoons. Now what we're gonna do with these herbs is we are going to add them into our pot of low simmering water and we're gonna let them simmer covered, but on the lowest possible setting for 15 minutes. Alrighty, now I'm gonna take this lid off. I'm just gonna open this away from me since there's a lot of steam that comes out, so be careful when you do that. Now, what I have found to be the best mixture is three tablespoons of the chamomile flowers, one tablespoon of the lemon balm, and one tablespoon of the lavender. So let's go ahead and put that into our low simmering water. Alrighty, I've got all my chamomile in. Now I'm gonna put my lemon balm, and next we'll put in our lavender. This is gonna be wonderful. Alrighty, perfect. Well, I've got my three herbs in there, and now I'm just gonna stir these around a little just to get them all mixed in and submerged into our hot water. And then once we do that, at this point, all we need to do is put our lid on and let that simmer for 15 minutes on the lowest setting. While our Great Sleep Herb Tea is simmering, I just want to share with you a little bit about an author named Rosemary Gladstar, who I think many of you are probably familiar with. But Rosemary writes a wonderful array of books all about herbs, and she has been growing herbs Oh, I think going back to the 1970s. And she's really an authoritative source. And this is a wonderful book, uh, specifically if you're new uh, to growing herbs and using them uh, to make home remedies, or even if you just buy the dried herbs and want to make home remedies. And it's called Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. And she talks how to know the herbs, or she writes about how to know the herbs, how to grow the herbs, and how to use the herbs. So I highly recommend, look for this at your library. And this book has been out a while, so hopefully this should be at your library. 
And if not, uh, or if you find it at your library and you find you really like it, uh, look for it at used bookstores because, as I said, it has been out for a while and it's a very popular book. There's a lot of copies uh, that have been printed, so you might be able to find that at a used bookstore. Uh, you know, those of you who know me, I really uh, love shopping at half price books, so uh, I'm a big fan of used bookstores. And I'll be sure to put a link uh, to the information about uh, her book, uh, but really any book that you can find as you're perusing around the library uh, by Rosemary Gladstar will be wonderful. And that's something that I want to say about books on herbs or if you're thinking about adding herbs to your garden or even starting a garden. Don't rush out and buy any books. Try to use your library and see what books they have on herb gardening and on making homemade herb remedies and so on and so forth and start to familiarize yourself with what uh, books that you like and learn what herbs grow well in your area. I think that's very important. And then as you sort of move a little longer <laughs> down the road on your herbal journey, you can then think about adding books to your herbal library, uh, your own personal herbal library. But taking books out of, the, out of the public library or community library like what we have in our town uh, really is very beneficial when you're first learning about herbs. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, when you're looking at using herbs for medicinal purposes, there are a lot of things that you need to consider because they do interact in the body in medicinal ways. And so, you know, if you're pregnant or nursing, and especially if you have allergies, especially like hay fever type allergies, it's very important to know which herbs you may not want to grow and which you may not want to use because they could flare up your allergies. So there's just a lot of information out there that can be very interesting and very uh, beneficial to you to take the time to learn. I briefly discuss all of this in uh, my two videos where I talk about essential herbs that I think are important for the medicinal herb cabinet uh, to have in the home. Uh, but definitely, I'm really just touching the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. So spend a little time looking at the herbal books and the herbal gardening books at your library. I think you'll be very happy as you expand your knowledge about them. Well, these herbs have simmered on the lowest setting. So now I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna take this lid off, again, opening it away from me because a lot of steam is gonna come out. And you should find that on your lowest setting, your lowest simmer setting, you don't really see a lot of activity, but the stovetop is keeping that water very warm as opposed to, as I discussed before, if you were just putting in a tea bag and pouring some water over it and steeping it for a few minutes and then drinking it. This is going to, what did, what did Emeril Lagasse used to say, kick it up a notch. <laughs> now I've got a glass measuring cup here. You can use a bowl, whatever you have. You just wanna make sure it's heat proof because this is quite hot. And I've just got a very simple mesh strainer. And what we're gonna do is strain out the solids. And I'm gonna try to do this as carefully as possible. Well, I was lucky as I was straining this out, the bulk of, of the herb stayed behind in the pot. So that was great. And then I've got a little bit here in my strainer so that we've got a nice clarified tea down here on the bottom. Now we've got our great night's sleep tea all ready to enjoy. You can add a little honey if you wish. Anything like that would be fine. Well, let's give this a taste. Mmm. Oh, that's so soothing. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Now, don't worry if you're not going to drink all of this in one sitting. You can simply store it in a jar, put it in your refrigerator. It'll stay fresh and potent for about three to four days. And then you can just warm it gently on the stove when you need to enjoy it. Well, if you'd like to learn more about herbs, be sure to click on this playlist over here where I have my whole herb series, including what herbs you should grow or keep dried on hand for your herbal medicinal cabinet and how to turn them into wonderful home remedies. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.